Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and early 4 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I want to talk again about my housing shortage crisis, as I call it. Uh, for everybody that watches, watches this channel, as you know, uh, approximately nine days ago, uh, I was told that I have 30 days to vacate the house I've lived in for six years. And I have a substantial down payment. I was looking into buying a house, and there's absolutely nothing in this town or anywhere near here under $350,000. No condos for rent. No two-family homes where I could become a landlord. Uh, I have substantial five-figure savings, and it's nowhere near enough. I'm a first-time buyer, and you see all these ads for, you know, for... FH, FHA loans, I think it's called, first time buyers. You know, so I, you think I really was under the impression that I would be helped getting a, a loan, and it is just out of my reach. I want to talk about something else though today. Um, so I started looking into renting, and I can't, I've come across a few rents in this town, um, very few and far between. They're very small. Each of them are in multifamily units, like five, six units in one building, which isn't ideal for me. Uh, I'm 14 years in recovery. I, I, I need a place that I prefer to be around people that aren't partying or drinking, uh, younger people, whether marijuana is legal or not. I, I just really, for my recovery, I really need to not be around this. And, uh, that's not really the situation. You know, I don't want to cast dispersions on anybody. But that's one of the problems I'm having. Now, this is the other problem. And I, I've, this, is, this has been on my mind now since I was told a week and a half ago that I have to leave. But I haven't talked about it for privacy and, and privacy reasons, legal reasons perhaps. All right. These few apartments that are for sale in town. Let me give you the, I, the overall view of this town. There's 7,000 people or so in this town. A good portion of the apartments, the buildings for, that are for rent, are owned by two different businessmen in this town. And it's probably very similar in a lot of other towns. Okay? Each of these businessmen own a prominent business in this town. Each of these businessmen, now I don't know how many uh, housing apartment units, uh, buildings, each of these people own, but it's a very good percentage of the overall apartments in this town. Okay, this, this, is the, this is the irony. This is the interesting part. Let's go back to November of last year when I took a knee at a Trump Stop the Steal rally. If you go back to November, if you page through my videos, you'll see where I took a knee at a Stop the Steal rally. As I walked into that rally, it was just starting, and there was the man that organized it standing right in front. And I was, very, you know, I was sick as hearing this stop the steal stuff. And as I looked down, the, I hadn't planned on doing this. And as I looked down Main Street, as I came out of the library and I looked down Main Street, and I saw people waving Trump flags out in the middle of Main Street, yelling at cars, you know, beeping, you know, getting people to beep and stuff. And I was just sick of this, you know, saying that uh, the election was stolen. So I went there by myself, and I was, you know, I was angry and sick of this. So I walked into the middle. I parked my car right on the side of the road. I walked into the middle of this rally just starting. And I just, you know, you can see from the videos. And I approached the man speaking in the front. So with it, I didn't want him to think that I was going to attack him or anything. So I stopped about 20 feet away. And uh, I then took after. I kind of walked around some more. They played the national anthem. I took a knee. Uh, I was completely, I was, they started screaming at me, get him, stand up, get him. Hey, hey, everybody look at him. And they surrounded me. I kept, I, my heart was pounding. I thought I was going to be jumped. You see the video, I'm surrounded by people. I stayed down. One guy behind me is, is flashing when I can't see. He's got his middle finger up behind my back, my head. You got to see this video. If you haven't seen this video yet, you got to see this. Um, here's the interesting thing: the guy that organized that rally 
yeah, you already see where I'm going with this. He is a major apartment landlord renter in this town. <laughs> a couple of the apartments that, the, the very few apartments that I have as options to rent are owned by him. And he knows me, and I know him. We haven't spoken since then. We are, we are obviously on very different political sides of the fence. You know, I've walked, by, I've walked by him in town, and I said, good morning. And he said, good morning to me. Uh, so here, here's, here's where I'm at. Uh, I have three weeks, less than three weeks, to find another apartment. And then, well, so my options are, and then there's another, another businessman, same situation. This other businessman, I know he's a Trump supporter because in front of all of his properties, there were Trump signs. There's still, I'll take a picture today. One of the apartments that are for rent in this town, it's, it's like a four, four unit building. This landlord still has this huge Trump sign. It's right on Main Street and it has this huge Trump sign, Trump 2020, still today in the front yard of that property. It's got, it got some spray paint some spray paint on it. Somebody sprayed it. It looks terrible. It looks hideous. It's in the main part of town. And this this landlord, this this is the one that that organized that rally that I took a knee at. We made eye contact when I walked right up to him at that rally. And he still today has that sign up in front of that property. So though that's my options to grovel to this man. Can I, can I, I'm in a bad place, you know? I know we have political differences, but can I please rent an apartment from you? And, you know, he's, he knows I make, he knows I have this channel. Um, he knows I'll still be making those videos in his, his part, the apartment he owns that he's gonna rent to me. Here's the thing that really bothers me though. Living in this apartment building with this, this shabby Trump leftover sign in the front yard. You know, it just it makes the property look terrible. You know, so this this is this, this is this is my moral ethical dilemma here. I, I can't I can't do it. I, I can't. I pray to God something else opens up soon. Um so two of the main, I'd say they own dozens of properties in this town, easily, dozens of properties. Almost all the rental buildings they've bought up in this town. Two big, wealthy Trump supporters that own businesses in this town. And they know me. And they know that I, I, I am no Trump supporter. And they know I have this YouTube channel. And like I said, in addition to that, they have, this one place has this shabby, shabby sign that just, you know, can you imagine? I'm going to have to grovel, I would have to grovel to this Trump supporter. Can I please rent some place to you? After I, after I took a knee at his rally and I, I, part of me thinks that he would rent to me just to have me under that thumb. He'll probably see this video. Um, I'd love to have him on the show. I'd love to sit down here and that would be a great video if I could sit down and have a video for you guys it would be in him having a conversation. Uh, a civil discussion about Donald Trump and Trumpism. That's that would be that's a goal. So if you are watching this, reach out to me. All right. Let me know what you think about this. And this is the thing. I'm willing to bet even though Trump supporters profess to be the average working guy, a lot of them are wealthy. Take, for instance, these boat rallies. You know, there was, like I talked about in one another video, that just happened last week, Memorial Day weekend. And these are huge boat boats that are easily in the six figures, if not over millions of dollars. You see these Trump boat rallies. These are not average Americans by any stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> these are wealthy people that don't like paying taxes, that don't like paying Social Security, Medicare, and all that stuff. Um, all right, let me know what you think of this. Of this. And let me know if it's just, it might be the same in your town, if there's very prominent businessmen that own a good portion of the town or the businesses. 
they have a big influence over the entire population of the town? Let me know. I'm going to be back later with another video. i got a lot more to talk about today, including Mike Lindell, Giuliani hawking Lindell's wares, and I had a conversation with two Trump supporters yesterday, a prolonged, civil, interesting discussion with two different Trump supporters yesterday, and it's scary. It's scary how these people... It's just like they, they repeat what's on Fox News, Fox News almost exactly. All right, I'll be back later with another video. You guys have a great Saturday.